Welcome to the first in a series of video tutorials centered around the creation of a desktop application from scratch. This application will use the Eclipse RCP framework as a basis for creation of a user-friendly tool for viewing, editing, and experimenting with 3D graphics. In particular, it will be centered around OpenGL and GLSL programming using Java and GeoGL. RCP stands for Rich Client Platform. It serves as a foundation or infrastructure for your application so you don't have to spend a lot of time with specific GUI features such as window layouts, adding context menus and drop-down menus and toolbars. Eclipse Foundation has created an open-source framework that has been used in major applications in the industry, including Landmark Halliburton and NASA. When learning Java for creating applications, the Eclipse RCP framework is unfortunately frequently overlooked as a tool for creating very flexible programs. I will show you how to create such applications from scratch and learn how to customize your user interface without using much code. The application we will build will be a 3D graphics viewer and hopefully we may add editing capabilities as well, not unlike what you can do in Blender but its main purpose is to have a place to experiment with OpenGL and GLSL shading programs. You will learn the concept of perspectives in RCP. The prerequisites for this tutorial are some Java programming, perhaps some familiarity with Eclipse IDE but it is not essential since Jeff will be going through it step by step. For the user interface we will be exploring Eclipse's SWT and JFace framework rather than AWT and Swing. You will learn about extensions and extension points to extend your functionality as plugins. It would help to have some understanding of 3D graphics, matrices, and transforms. Since we will be going back and forth with Blender as a reference, some familiarity with Blender would be helpful too. Blender has been written in C and C++ as well as Python for scripting. Our application will use Java and we will make calls to the OpenGL libraries using a tool called GeoGL. I have downloaded the most current release of this tool and I will show you how to configure your first application so that Java can talk to the native libraries that OpenGL provides. This will be on both Windows and Mac platforms, however, I will be favoring Windows for the development. The Mac is not keeping up with the latest GLSL versions for some reason. Hopefully that will change. We will create an application where you can list various examples of shaders and visualize the results in a viewer. We will bring in some of the shader techniques found in Blender and view them in our new application. For example, the matte cap materials found in Blender can be captured and brought into our new application and we can study the code to see how it works. Also, the recent OpenGL Super Bible 7th edition has some really good shader examples we will bring into our application for examining and viewing. Working with GeoGL is very similar to creating OpenGL programs in C slash C++ except for the fact that certain data structures are required for GeoGL. Jeff will go through how to translate from the C++ example programs to the GeoGL equivalent. We may also have time to explore the 2D graphics support that Eclipse RCP has. This should be an enlightening and fun series, if you are up to the challenge. It is possible that advanced portions of the series may end up as an official Udemy course, depending on demand. Jeff will tell you more about this series. Okay, I'm going to intervene from where um, we left off in the introduction and just kind of show you a few things. This is an um, example of an Eclipse RCP application. And um, as we saw in the, in the beginning, that it's, you know, it's very, very flexible as far as uh, being able to position windows. It's got some uh, nice uh, tools for creating these kind of uh, tree-like uh, GUI pieces. Or in this case, we've actually got a little text editor that we have, although this is basically in read only. Um, these are my different shaders. The shaders are represented here. Um, this thing has various perspectives. Um, so, for example, let's, let's bring in something like, um, let's pick a density shader, which works really good with maps. 
And if we bring in, say, something like, um, this was actually exported. I, the original data came from USGS, and I was able to use Mathematica to, to get uh, elevation data. And then I read it into the system, and then I applied, um, you know, this is a uh, GLSL shader. And if you go through the different um, pieces here, this does not have a geometry shader, but it has a vertex shader. This is pretty standard for most of my um, shaders to have pretty much the same vertex shader. Where all the interest comes in is in the fragment shader. And I've got some logic here to you know, be, basically put this color map based on um, elevation. The other thing is, uh, similar to um, Blender's, if you go into Blender, you have this capability of switching to these different layouts. Well, that corresponds to what they call perspectives in the RCP application. So I got a bunch of these here that, um, that you saw during the intro. So for example, I can go into this um, 2D thing. Meanwhile, the other perspective is still there. You just can't see it. But you can imagine how flexible this could be, you know, where you can switch back and forth. Maybe you want to have a 2D paint. Um, you, maybe you want to do some um, texture maps or something like that. Um, very, very flexible. Um, if you go into, I've even got a little chess program in here um, where you can, um, this thing here uh, has a these pull down menus, another thing that you can configure. Most of these menus and the layouts and stuff are controlled by uh, declaratively, which means that you just create your, your changes in an XML file and then it creates the code under um, uh, for you. So that's the other reason. Uh, unfortunately, most people don't know much about uh, when I see a lot of Java courses, they start creating a Java application, but they, they completely ignore this powerful feature called Eclipse RCP. And it's not that much harder to actually create these. And we're gonna do this from scratch as we continue in the series. But for example, I could go to um, something like this, and now I've got a window that's pretty much um, like a web page. So that's one of the things that's supported in here. And I can, um, I can literally take, say, like this chess program in here and go and do a pull down and then do a paste game. And if you switch the score sheet, there's the game. And you can, you know, essentially step through it. Another really kind of cool thing with this particular perspective that you could imagine that the screen here could be a 3D um, model of the chess program, and you can interact with it. That was something I never got around to doing, but uh, I could certainly do that because the 3D viewer is basically intermingled with um, with um, the other perspectives. Um, and also, I have a little evaluator here where I can actually turn on a chess engine. And a chess engine is essentially a um, artificial intelligence uh, program that plays chess. And I've, what I've got here is Houdini. Um, there is actually some open source uh, chess engines now that are available for free. And they, I think they're even stronger But at the time that I uh, brought this in. 2012, this is one of the strongest uh, chess engines around. You can literally play chess against this engine. You never win, but you learn a, b a lot about your mistakes. And what I did is I created a score sheet like this. And you can also have this idea of a blender map. Um, this hasn't been evaluated, but you can imagine little um, colors here that represent mistakes uh, within a game. So it's very, very interesting to and I've got, you know, various series. Um, so again, all of these tabs and windows are very easy to create, and you can combine them. You, I, if I wanted to, I could move this guy and dock it over here. Um, I can switch back here. Um, very, very powerful. You know, I can create toolbars. Again, very, you know, using this declarative uh, approach, using extensions and extension points. Um, another application, uh, 
or another perspective that I have here um, is this kind of genetics. Uh, so let's go back to my visualizer. And um, let's take this one off. Let's switch back to the shader perspective and let me delete this guy and then switch back to my genetics. Uh, I can actually go into here and do a second generation. And this was kind of cool. This is also done purely by shaders. Um, this is not actually um, all of the, the objects and stuff all drawn using JLSL. So it's really the, the graphics card itself that's doing all the drawing. The beauty of this technique, and I think I'm using geometry shaders for this, um, as well as the vertex and fragment shaders, is as you zoom in, you get no jaggies. It's absolutely perfect. So it's, it's, it's very much like a vector, but it's completely drawn through the bitmaps. It's just drawn, and it's very, very fast. So you can do some pretty wild things, and the animation there is, is done by changing some of the um, positions of the objects themselves. Um, if you go to let's switch back to our shader mode, you'll see that it actually created all of these what I call organisms. Um, let's see if there's some other interesting examples here. So what we'll do in this series is we'll, it won't be identical to this application, but very similar to it. We'll create an RCP application from scratch, and we will you know, bring in the capability of actually doing graphics, being able to load um, various types of um, 3D objects. These are just some of my canned ones that I have. Um, it's kind of interesting to see for example, um, you could do things like a cookie cutter and then bring in bring in something like Beethoven's head. And what that does is it's it's basically just um, creating an orthographic projection of this on a flat surface. And if you look at the logic here, this thing also uses a geometry shader really helps a lot in be able to add these really nice lines to the system. Um, another um, doing um, texture mapping. I don't have a lot of really good examples there, but the, the one that I had with the killer whale, um, this one has a texture shader on it. So each of these um, things with this killer whale. These are actually um, basically a UV map that was used for this particular one. Um, for a compound objects, they're just colored in you know just the sub objects. I, I'm using this really nice fong. fong um, it's a, actually a combination. I got this from a book and I kind of combined a couple of different lighting uh, models together. And it just gives a really nice look. So if you if you bring up the um, let's see, what would be a good one to look at? Yeah, it just the shading is so so well done. And this, of course, is without the um, you know seeing the the uh, wireframe part of the model. If I want to see the wireframe of the model, I can go into wireframe and then just bring this up. So it's a little bit different um, as far as the way I did this application. Each each one of these uh, are separate shaders, but um, we're going to kind of investigate how to do it. It's not obvious. Um, you know, it takes a lot of doing to try to configure everything, and there's certain steps that if you forget, um, it doesn't quite work. So I'm hoping, similar to the the series I have on Blender, you know, getting a Blender uh, developer's environment, that um, this will help some people and get excited about actually. I like I said, I 
if I need something, for example, I've got a uh, perspective that builds my website. If you go to my main website, I actually have something, my links. Now, this is pretty old. I'm probably going to redo this because this is using um, sort of static uh, HTML. The better way of doing this is to you know tie it to uh, to a server using say Elasticsearch, but you know, but it does show that you can create you know within the RCP environment you can create these, and that's how I, I dynamically create um, these this different this this kind of website the pages for the website by just going in and modifying things here. So it it just kind of shows that um, some of the capability. You know, this view here is an HTML view. This is a tree view. Um, and then these are like text views and fields like that. And so we may get into some of the, the GUI aspects of it. But I'm going to center on the 3D graphics because that's my main um, mission at this point because I want to explore a bit more. Um, you know, I've been fascinated with what you can do with, with shaders. One other thing I want to mention is um, if we go to if we go to search for Eclipse releases and we look at um, this Eclipse software, they name uh, each of the through the years. I think the I think I went as far back as Indigo. I think that was one of the first ones I used. So I've been using Eclipse for quite a few years. Currently, uh, the application you saw was uh, using Luna. And I haven't I've been doing much with this until recently. And they're now, all, you know, they're going to have Photon coming out next year. And so I'm using Oxygen. And it turned out that I converted all my things from Luna and they all seem to be working in Oxygen. Um, but they have these releases and uh, you can go here and kind of read about it. But some major companies, NASA, um, if you look up and look up, uh, say, NASA Eclipse RCP, you might find some things like um, how they're using an RCP application. Let's see if there's a better one for that. Yeah, so this is a, a good website to look at, and they're using RCP for the um, for some of the robotics that they're using on Mars and in space. So it's definitely it's it's a good platform to work with, and. Um, I'll be using um, a tool called Joggle, and Joggle will be the um, will be the the uh, external tool I use to actually talk to OpenGL, and um, we'll go through that in the next video. Actually, setting up an environment and then integrating Joggle with an application. So I think enough said at this point. Hopefully, there's some excitement. If not, well. Just listen to Trump, I guess, and that'll excite you. So uh, until next time, um, happy computing.